Good afternoon everybody, it's uh, just coming up to uh, 6 o'clock. I brought the uh, trusty uh, Explorer with me and of course Lassie has found some water. We're heading for Arms Tour. Hopefully there's no one camped up there. We've got Brat Tour just over there, Arms Tour there and then tomorrow we'll go into the moor more deeply. I just parked quite close and I just don't want to be walking too far as it's quite late in the day. Okay well here we are right on the top of a tour. This is the first time I've ever camped. All the times I've been to Dartmoor I've never camped on top of a tour. So this is mind you I've camped on the top of uh, Little Neeset uh, plenty of times uh, but that's not strictly speaking a tour. So uh, this is Arms Tour and there is a bigger space behind here which I'm not telling anybody about uh, but there is a bigger space behind here which I was tempted to go into and I would have gone into and you would certainly get a decent sized um, tent in there, super mid, namash, yeah there's a good, there's a good space um, just behind but it's kind of like in the shadow. And I must admit, as I was here, I kind of did want to try and pitch on the top. As I'm right next to a tour, I had to try and... Although I was at um, um, East Mills, East Mill Tour um, last year, wasn't I? Or was it West Mill Tour? Whichever one of those mill tours. So I was kind of on top of that, although it was just, just down it a tiny bit, but it was kind of on top. But this is right on top. This is this is on top. Of, on, this is about as on top as you can get on top of something. <laughs> I should be so lucky. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. So I distracted myself there. I found this little space here. The wind is coming in the uh, from a southwesterly uh, direction. So I've kind of pitched in this little spot in here it again just about fits uh, this side is obviously right <laughs> to the ground Lassie's just found the uh, Lassie just came out my back entrance <laughs> I just uh, Lassie just came out my back passage <laughs> now the only weakish spot is I've put a peg right in there and it's right on the grass barrier between the grass and and the rock so I know it's probably completely irrelevant but I just put an extra knot in here and a knot in there just so that if anything did go uh, there is you know some redundancy there just in case but to be honest we're not expecting uh, strong wind, so it should be fine. It's not the tightest of lines here that I've done, because I've tried to keep it sort of in this central line as much as possible. I've kind of had to put the tarp where the tarp's going to fit, not so much where I want to sleep inside it, because as I say, I really wanted to, you know, sleep on top <laughs> so we're off and we haven't even started yet so <laughs> and then obviously I've pitched this side here now basically the wind as I say is coming from the southwest which is directly you know behind the tap so let's see look at Leslie trying to trying to dig holes in the in a rock there and yeah I've given height each side uh, rain isn't forecast, I could lower if necessary, uh, but again it helps just give some space inside because I'm going to have to sleep I think probably sort of down this line down here a bit, probably not quite in the centre, although it might not be far off the centre actually, but it's going to have to be, I think it's going to be the centre 
off center down through there so it's going to be sort of at a slight angle down through the tap most mind you i was going to say most of you probably won't know mind you <laughs> the hanger honors are probably the ones that have been around for a long time <laughs> bless your souls um of course that's uh brat tour uh you know just over there the last resting place of someone important to me um so it kind of feels a bit strange up here <laughs> Kind of feels a little bit strange up here as well quite sad really but it is what it is we carry on ten, God, ten years <laughs> i'd have put her there uh almost exactly 10 years ago to be honest <sighs> okay let's get the uh let's get a bit inside eh okay just a a quickie good night message i've uh i've got stacks of headroom here it's funny sometimes i've got more headroom under here and sometimes less i think it's just the way it's pitched as you can see that's the center line there but i've angled it at this angle here but my head is still pretty much above the center here thankfully the mist is uh, coming in. There's uh, mist pretty much all around now. And that mist will probably... And that mist will probably stay most of the night you can't see Brat Tor over there now and the mist is blowing up the valley those people have long gone I didn't see them again they uh, they may have seen me and then just disappeared down I was a little bit uh, uncomfortable here for a little while when I saw people over there, but I knew they weren't going to be a problem because they had a dog and it looked like a young a family or something, it looked like a child or something. I was a little bit like one percent concerned about Brat Tour, and I'm glad that I didn't camp over there. One, I think it would have been too sad, but two, there were several people, youths maybe, men, I'm guessing. Um, over there and if I'd have been camped over there somewhere they definitely would have seen me which wouldn't have been a problem but I prefer when I'm camping that there's not uh, other people around so I think tomorrow I try not to be too late to get going I think I can't say I'll be exactly early <laughs> I probably won't be early but uh, I definitely won't be hanging around here too long and then we'll head into the outback as it were but I really don't think we're going to get any disturbances tonight it's eight o'clock the sun set uh, about 10 minutes ago so there's about uh, 10 minutes or so of twilight okay well I'm gonna duck inside and I will catch you all tomorrow well good morning everybody it's just gone 11 we can see that on that watch on the right wrist, on the watch on the left wrist. Yes, I am now watching, watching. <laughs> <coughs> too early in the morning. I am now officially a two wrist watcher. Well, I'm never going to be taking the Rolex off my left wrist now, let's face it. But since I got this Garmin uh, Fenet 6X, I kind of quite, kind of quite like it. It's uh, I don't really use any of the connectivity to uh, the internet or notifications or anything like that. I look at the phone too often <laughs> um, for that kind of nonsense. But it's just interesting to track things and be able to see just other interesting things. So, 
<clears throat> so I thought I'd, I'd wear it, you know, on the on the right wrist, and it seems to work okay. Maybe it looks a bit odd to some people, but I'm not really around that many people. And I don't really think people in the in the pub if I go there for mum or in the supermarket are particularly going to um, take any notice of it, and that's about it really. Um, and if I take Dina to the beach or something, there's only going to be dog walkers there or something. Nobody's going to notice anyway. So, as I say, it's 11 o'clock. I woke up about 10, so I've had about 12 hours sleep. It'll be interesting to see what the app says about that. That might actually get my body battery up a bit. It's been quite low being at home with Dina stressing all the time. Um, so that would be quite an uh, interesting, fun thing to see. So... <coughs> I've put uh, porridge is cooked, so I'm just waiting for it to just cool off a little bit. We've got some lassie here. Let's see. She's a little bit wet from being outside. <coughs> oh. All right, good girl. Oh, you're a bit wet, aren't you? <laughs> oh, bless you. Oh. Good girl. Oh, you're a bit wet. Oh. <laughs> I don't always complain if I kiss something wet. Oh, that's very often. Right, okay, now go back. Go back over there. Right, let's get, carry on with what we're right. Let's carry on with what we're doing, and then we'll catch up in a minute. <clears throat> okay, well, it's coming up to twelve o'clock, and we still haven't left yet, but we are about to start packing. So I've put in the pack the mat. And I use the I use the self-inflating mat this time, so it takes up more room in the pack. But I haven't got that much, you know, it's fine, there's plenty of room. And then this is the bag with all my nighttime goodies in. It really is not cold at all today. I know it's still early September, but it is still very mild. So I've taken my shirt off and I'm really not gonna need that. Um, on the walk today under any circumstances. So I've put that in the cool bag, in the uh, dry bag as well in there and I will do that up in a minute. So for the walk I will wear this um, chocolate, I um, can't remember what they're called now, they've gone out of business a long time ago unfortunately. Uh, but anyway this merino base layer with a zip long sleeves and my wind shirt and then, if necessary, I've got the waterproof to go over the top. And like I said, I'm very warm just sitting here like this. And I've been sitting here like this out of sleeping bag for over an hour now. And it is just still so warm. So that's going to be, you know, plenty. One, um, one thing I kind of learned a bit from last time is... I have lots of little bits, you know, I've got bits of cord here. You see what I partly miss, and it's not completely to do with this, what I partly miss with this pack is no lid over the top of it. And I would sometimes find this is useful to put like little bits in the top of the lid. Well, this hasn't got one, although you could attach one. Uh, I just I just think it adds weight, kind of kind of defeats the object of the bag really, and it's not completely necessary. So what I remember, what I thought about last time is all the little bits. Because last time I had I put extra food in this in here as well, of course. But uh, last time I had all my pasta packets these pasta packets here they were all loose <clears throat> so 
so when I was packing the pack I was packing in like loose pasta packets and loose cheese and you know just different loose loose things which was just a little bit annoying when you're trying to pack your bag and you just got a lot several loose bits so I sort of grabbed this bag here it's actually got a bit damp I think it's it been right on the ground I think um, but it's fine it's dry on the inside uh, so all the cheese and loose bits I'm gonna pop in in that bag there so this is kind of like a, an extra extra just an extra uh, stuff sack for me to uh, put things in all right I better start packing because like I said it's uh, 11 o'clock and I want to get over to little knee set which isn't that far away it's only probably from here an hour and a half hour 45 but uh, I do want to uh, get over there soon and I can relax over there so it's gonna be another hour probably while I'm packing up here so one o'clock two three so I should be over there by three four o'clock at the latest with a stop maybe um, and then that's still you know three and a half hours before <laughs> another uh, dog shot uh, so another three and a half odd hours of daylight after that so it should hopefully and it's supposed to be sunny later on as well it's still got this mist here at the moment oh. so as you can see we're uh, we're definitely going to be walking in in the mist muddy dog you see she's been digging again so a lot of it's going to be walking in the rain or oh, the mist. I have put on my phone the the route from here to Little Knee Set on my phone on my watch, so we may get a chance to look at that. Uh, like I said, I'm hope. Let's see. Go back over that way. <laughs> go back that way. <laughs> very obedient dog isn't she look you're all wet and muddy and I really don't want wet muddy dog all over me stay there stay <laughs> yes I know you're very beautiful let's <laughs> see You see, when you're trying to dig to Australia, you see, you're not supposed to do it on top of a rock because you're not going to get very far if you do it on top of a rock. There's a rock right there. I think you saw it last night, and that's where she's trying to dig to Australia. There's just some moss or some grassy stuff on top of one of these tall things, which is right next to here. Collis is supposed to be the most intelligent dog of all. All right. Okay, well, that's enough of all of... That's enough of all of that. All right, we're going to start packing. Go back, let's see. All right, so we better get some packing done. <coughs> okay, well, you've you caught me at a stop. I don't very often stop like this. It's actually an actual stoppy, city downy stop when, I, when I'm walking. I tend to, well, certainly in the past, tend to want to keep walking until I got to wherever I was going. Now I seem to be a little bit more relaxed. We've done half way, we've done Great Links tour, we've done Gunner tour things up here, and eventually we found uh, Bleak House here. I will admit, as the tracker on my uh, watch will attain, I was sort of wandering around, <laughs> wandering around a little bit up there, because uh, it's so misty, it was difficult to see it in the mist, even though I was in the correct uh, uh, vicinity and bright daylight, you'd see it from anywhere up there, but in the mist um, it did take a little bit of tracking down, I did get the GPS out on the um, phone just to uh, you know finish that last little bit of tracking down just for uh, ease really I'll uh, probably just do a little try maybe and do a little bit of video here on the watch which I'll edit in somewhere if I do get to do a watch video and if I don't get to do a watch video then I'll <laughs> I can edit in as part of as part of this video but I'll try and do it as a separate video which would be quite uh, interesting 
I set my heading when I left uh, Green Tor of 110 degrees. Now, of course, obviously, I've been using the phone as well. Or not, of course, I've been using the watch as well, just to sort of, you know, keep track a bit. But considering walking on Dartmoor, and up there is uh, Little Neeset. The amazing thing is, and I, let me just <laughs> turn my head around again. I, I switch it that way sometimes if I need to look through the viewfinder and I've got the mic on the top. The amazing thing is that when you're walking about three and a half kilometers, literally across like almost no man's land really, for want of a better description, and I'm not being shot at of course. Uh, but there's no paths, there's no tracks, it's just rough grass, rough wet grass, boggy, tussocky stuff. And you can't go in a straight line, it's, it's virtually impossible, especially over such a long distance. So it's quite amazing that uh, you know, even after, you know, you know, going a bit left and a bit right and a bit this way, <laughs> a bit that way. Um, and I have been keeping an eye on the compass as well as the watch. You know, the, the bearing is directly that way, even though I have gone a bit of a zigzaggy thing. You just would have thought that over that distance, you'd have come off course at some point or other. Um, but no, we're still dead on, dead on track, although also the, the, the line on the watch is also dead on line, so it's not surprising that this is still, you know, dead accurate, but uh, it's just a bit of useless, uh, useless talking there, really. Um, talking about compass, maybe put your compass in a different pocket to your map, because there was at one point earlier on when I just wanted to check the compass, because like I said, because I was coming across nowhere, <laughs> I didn't just want to rely on the watch. Even though I knew the watch would get me here, I do so little navigation, because most of the areas I do, I just know uh, so well that I just rarely need to do navigation here. But obviously as the mist was out, I thought it was a good opportunity to get the compass out and get using it, not just rely on you know, technology, just to try and keep keep it in the head, you know, a little bit as to the old way as well. So, anyway, I took the map out to look at the map and I must have walked with the map in my hand and then I went to check the compass and I knew the compass was in my pocket and it wasn't in there. Luckily, luckily, it was about 20 metres behind me, so it was a very short walk and yeah, I, I've yeah, found it very easily, so if we keep compasses and maps in different pockets so they don't, uh, one doesn't knock the other one out. Okay, well, according to the watch, I'm 37 meters off track, <laughs> which is uh, nothing. I think what I do going to do here, I'm going to stop the video and then I'm just going to do turn it on again for adding into a video on the watch, so I can try and keep watch bits mostly together. So here we are collecting water, direct and drinking direct. Of course, be careful not to fall in. One very nice feature of this pack, and it's not something I've used before because I normally camp right next to water or very, very close to water. Here I'm about. Uh, 
one kilometer from camp and of course when you're uh, you know about a kilometer from camp I have carried the water in my hands uh, in fact every time I've carried it up that uh, up that that far but I've just uh, somehow discovered that uh, I don't know why it's taken so long but these uh, bags the uh, side pockets are big enough to put uh, two litre water pouches filled up inside them I think one of the reasons I haven't done it before is I've usually put things in those pockets and then I can't uh, put water in as well uh, but this time I've normally I've got a map in there but at the moment I've been able to put the map in my pocket and the compass in the pouch for the camera and the other side I've usually got tent pegs or things like that but I must admit I've given Lassie the tent pegs um, I think she's currently washing the tent pegs off in the river oh, she's over the other side of the river now I think she's making the absolute most of uh, water now before we get up to camp and there isn't any water <laughs> So a nice bit of, uh, I wouldn't say doggy action, <laughs> a nice bit of lassie, lassie action for, for all the, uh, the, the lassie lovers out there. Make sure it's in the frame. <laughs> doggy action. <laughs> no doggy out here. So that's for uh, John Boy in uh, New Zealand. Okay, well, it's half past five now, so between uh, stopping to do a video on, a bit of a video on the watch and a bit of a video on uh, not filtering the water and uh, just coming over here, we've uh, taken a bit longer than, than planned, but that's fine. Let's see, we're only a kilometre away now, so it's only like 10, 12, 15 minutes to go. We'll be in camp by six. I thought we'd be there by about four. But like I said, you know, we stopped. I stopped for a tea earlier as well. That took a bit of time. And I did some watch video there on the, on the new Garmin. But that's the thing. We've got plenty of time. We're not in any rush. All right, well, I better get walking again now. Okay, well, we've reached Great Neeset. We've got here at quarter to six. So a little bit later than planned, but like I said, we stopped you know, several times. It wasn't that far up here. Um, it said a kilometre, but we seemed to get here in, in no time. And the wind usually has been south or southwest, which would be that direction or uh, that direction or that direction, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yes, that way or that way. But for tonight, and I think tonight only, because it's changing again tomorrow, it's from the north. At the moment, it's slightly northwest, but a bit later on, it's going to swing to north, which is about that way, somewhere through there. And then it's going to swing about north east. There's a possibility it could actually swing all the way around to the east, but I can't. If I'm pitching a tap, you've got to kind of like pick your, pick your battleground <laughs> and kind of hope that it works. So, because at the moment it's blowing you know, this way from the north, we're going to go with a north to northeasterly, north northeasterly pitch. So, it just so happens that, uh, hang on, hang on, I'm over here. <laughs> So I put my pole here just as an indication. So I'm kind of thinking that this slightly raised area here could be where my head and, and pillow goes, natural raise there slightly, and then be going in this direction here. And use this flattish area there. It's not, uh, it's not the flattest, but it's uh, that's the only thing with Great Nice set. It's a reasonably good place to pitch, but there aren't very many spots up here. It is quite 
grassy everywhere. Let's see, leave that. Oi. I think she's found where a cow maybe did it, so. I think it did. Let's see, leave I think she's found where a cow did it. I drank, the, drank you know, unpurified water and did, did, did its loose business. Just. Let's see, leave it. Can't be very nice, can it? So. We're going to take our chances and we're going to pitch in a north, north, easterly uh, direction. And then that covers the north, it covers the north easterly direction. And if it does swing around to the east uh, tomorrow morning, then it kind of gives some protection that way as well. Tomorrow it's back to the south and southwest, so probably won't stay here tomorrow, probably will move um, north tomorrow but we'll kind of see how it goes uh, I could stay here tomorrow and then just head back that way but I'll kind of sort of see how time goes and and things like that I'd like to try and do a bit more of a video on this watch so we'll see whether I can get some video done this evening uh, but given that it's coming up to six o'clock and dark in an hour and a half hour well, a couple of hours um, we'll kind of sort of see, see how it goes. Okay, well we've got the tarp up. It took a little bit of jiggery pokery because you can kind of get different bits higher and lower and different angles on things and different things like that. But I think we've got a pretty good pitch. I like the front to be as high as possible, as you as you know. Now. That's probably about as high as I'm going to get it. It's probably not an ideal best pitch um, that I've done because it does drop down quite quickly. But with my other pitches, if you remember, I was often able to like use the ground around me to get height somewhere and then pitch down inside. Well, you kind of can't do that with this. This is pretty much a flat almost downhill pitch so I've given quite long lines on the back to try and you know keep the back off the ground as it were but I can't raise the back up any more than that because if the wind picks up or any rain did come through it's going to come, you know, straight through there. And if you remember, I said the wind is a north easterly wind. So this is the northeast side. So again, I've kept this side quite low or very low. And then I've pitched these pegging points low. That should be low enough. It's not pitched to the ground, but that should be low enough all the way over there that with me right in the middle it should give me you know plenty of protection there this side here i've pitched high with a longer line although at the moment the wind is coming in this direction so i'm hoping that the forecast is correct that it does <laughs> swing around that way if not, there's room for manoeuvre. I can move the bivvy that way if I have to. And, and obviously the tarp I can move that way if I have to. But the forecast says northeast later on to east. So we'll go with what the forecast says. Even though this is more of a north northwest wind at the moment, I'm still protected i've still got this side quite low even though it may not be pitched right to the ground here but it's still pitched quite low to give you know plenty of protection there as well because i think i need some cover out here we're in september it's breezy for rain is not forecast but it might rain so i do think we need some extra protection here 
So that's how we've pitched it. So now I will empty the pack out and start getting things inside. It's uh, quarter past six. And apart from one, sorry, older gentleman down at uh, Bleak House, I've not seen anybody at all all day. I heard voices, as I say, earlier on, but uh, didn't see anyone. So this is uh, very nice, to say the least, I have to say. I've given Lassie her food, so I think it's time to settle in for the evening now. It'll be dark in an hour and a half. It's quarter past six, so dark in an hour and a half. Okay, well, it's quarter to seven. It's not dark for another hour, but it's, it's quite breezy outside. So I don't see the point in staying outside any longer. So I've pretty much got everything sorted out. I've not unpacked my nighttime bag, but that's the next thing to do. And then I'm pretty much going to get into the uh, quilt, I think. I've put lasses mat out this time. I will say I never bother putting it out in the summer months, especially when it's very dry because uh, she just sleeps anywhere and she actually she doesn't like it. The chances of her actually sleeping on that are pretty slim. She'll probably find some drier uh, grass out there um, but this this area here is a bit damp and if it rained and if I do have to get her inside then I just wanted somewhere a bit drier for her, you know, to get on. But she really doesn't like that material, so I don't think she'll she'll be using it. But it's there, you know, if necessary. I've put, as usual, my small piece of Cuban uh, just here. I can, uh, you know, I can adjust that as as necessary. I've got this piece of foam here, which I can use where and as necessary. Um, I think last night I just used it for putting putting stuff on it last night. <laughs> all right, that's enough of me talking. You must get fed up with me talking. So all I do in these videos is, is talk. At least, at least we're talking in a different place anyway. Well, different-ish place. Okay, well, that's it then. I will probably finish up here and do more video in the morning on this i might try and do some watch video in a minute but the battery's going down so i'm going to put this camera on to charge for a bit and then we'll just see how things go from there i'm going to wish you all good night and i will see you tomorrow unless anything important happens or i want to say something else <laughs>